Hello and welcome to Fusion Fundamentals with me, MJ. Today we're doing something a bit different. Um, I've been working on a project with a friend of mine who's a custom knife maker. He makes high-end custom knives. Um, working on a slip joint. So he's taught me a bit about the mechanics of a slip joint and how it all comes together. So I've just done this video to um, just to help others that are maybe using Fusion and aren't doing them by hand. You're wanting to do them in your in your CAD and uh, machine them on your CNC. I'm going to show you how to go from this, which is essentially just a, a background image that I have dimensioned to 6 inches or 152 odd millimeters, um, to something like this, where we've got our blade, handle, spring, a tension spring, as well as the various components that we can put onto a fixture plate to get the machining done. So follow along and see how you go. So this video is going to go on quite long. I've included chapters in the description so feel free to have a look there and jump around to any particular points that you're looking for with regards to setting it up and all of that. Um, so to start I'm just going to insert a canvas from my computer Double click on that one, insert it on the top plane. I'm going to drag it out a bit. I'm not too phased uh, by how much right now um, because we're going to calibrate this. So right click on the canvas there, calibrate. And I'll select that point and that line that drops down there, more or less in line there. It is six inches according to the website. Um, this is a Casey Berry heel. Um, sheep foot so it's quite a cool knife um, and what's nice is we can clearly see the distinction between the tang and the, <coughs> and the spring uh, just bear in mind we'll discuss it later that the spring isn't um, tensioned so this is what it would look like in the relaxed position we will later on have a look at how we can drop that down and Get the built-in tension so that it, when it's in the open position you've got the tension being applied to the tang over there. So to start with I'm going to create a sketch on this top plane here and we're going to draw the outline of the handle, the spring and the blade. Um, then we'll extrude the various components and um, take it from there. So I'll fast forward through this bit, it's basically you just take the spline tool, zoom in, select your starting point, You're basically just tracing along the lines. Select your starting point and then carry on. On the tang over here, I'm gonna I'm not gonna put in these curved edges. The guy I've been working with to on a slip joint, um, he's doing these by hand. Um, I think it's such a small, small adjustment. And if you are machining these and it's a little bit out, that'll affect the the walk and talk of the knife. So for now, I'm just gonna leave these as is. Okay, so there we've got the outline of our knife. I'm just going to exit the sketch and we've got a couple of closed um, components there. So I'm going to extrude this. I'm going to make it 2.8 mil thick but I want it um, symmetric because I'm going to later on be using the top plane as a mirror plane. So if I've got it symmetric I will make that 1.4 and we can see there there is our spring. I'm just going to measure this. Yep, 2.8. So I'm going to go into bodies. I'm going to rename that spring. So this is just to help us um, 
identify them later on. Right now I'm only going to extrude this um, the spring and the blade. So next extrude, let's turn our drawing off. The blade would include the tang there, new body, same thing, uh, symmetric, 1.4. Okay, and it was a new body they selected. Again, there we've got our blade. The tolerance on that is quite fine. Um, so you don't really have to worry about any any issues with that and also when you do the actual manufacturing you'll add on like a 0.1 millimeter um, excess just to just just to make sure you've got enough material on there after heat treatment and uh, you getting rid of that scale um, so there's our spring and blade one thing I forgot to do was add in the pivot hole as well as the the holes for keeping it together. So I'll just take a center diameter circle. I'm not sure of these exact holes. This would depend on you as the manufacturer. So I can see that looks a bit big compared to the drawing. Um, so I'm just going to dimension that to what are we sitting at? So yeah, 2.1. So just make that 2. That looks about right. Um, but then again, if you've got a standard drill size, uh, drill bit size, you can just set it to that. Obviously, it's your interpretation if you're making this specific knife. And this is just to give you an idea of what you can do. So for this hole, uh, it is the bottom hole. I'm not sure why there's a top hole on there. This one's a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make this 2.4 and then the pivot will also be 2.4. I'll just push C there to select the center diameter circle. 2.4. So let's finish sketch. Um, what I'm going to need to do now is because I didn't put those in initially. Go into our extrudes and just select them. Then we will have our through holes. Do the same thing for that, the blade. And there we've got our extrudes. So, so there's our holes. Um, this pivot hole will probably be a bit bigger when you're machining. Probably around 5 mils, depending on if you're putting in a bushing or how you are actually manufacturing that. If you would like to, you could also rename these. So I could name that spring. So that if I have a long timeline, I can go back and easily identify, although it does highlight it. So it's uh, not really necessary, but if you're someone that likes to have everything neatly labeled, um, that's something you can do. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn off this canvas so we can see what our blade looks like. Um, if I right click on here, this is a good way to see the action of the, the knife. Right click, move, move copy, and we'll select bodies here. I'll select this body and I'll have a rotate. You select the axis, um, and I'm going to say create copy. You can actually see the movement. So at that 90 degree mark, we are pretty close to spot on. You can see it's coming past the spring there, so that may be an issue for you. And depending on how the knife is coming together and then you can see what it would look like in the closed position you can fine-tune that to whatever you need to oh, that's a bit big there we go so it's about 164 so we just want that uh, kicker to be touching there. We can see the tip of the blade comes out the back. So you may need to do some adjustment on the actual front of the blade um, because when the handle covers you could, you don't want that sticking out there. Um, so that will be up to you to decide how far you want that. Um, you do obviously want some space between the spring and the blade because you'll have some play and if you're pushing on that you don't want the blade um, knocking on the spring. 
but that would be that would then be your your blade in the open or the closed position. I'm actually just going to get rid of that for now. We can do it again later. Um, now we can see sort of how the blade and the spring are interacting. What I want to do is go back into the sketch that we did and just draw some uh, guidelines. So I'm going to take the center down of the circle, the construction line, and at the center of our pivot, just draw that out. So I'm wanting this line to coincide with the back of the tang. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this is kind of like, uh, I don't know what it would be called, but it's like a magic circle that shows you where your geometry is in contact. So I can see it's not quite in contact with the spring over there. So we could potentially drop our spring a little bit um, and then a straight line between the back over here and the kick. So that's one of the reasons I didn't put that curve in there because I want to see how this all comes together. Obviously this being um, a pattern, it's not 100% perfect. And we could potentially move this pivot forward or up or down, but that would be for you to play with um, just to fine tune it. But ideally you want this circle to be touching the back of the tang, the top of the spring, as well as this construction line coming between your kick and the back of the blade there or the back of the tang. So in a case like this you may want to adjust the, the kick height um, but as we saw earlier if you do that the tip of the blade will be touching. This is just a guideline on things that you can check to get your knife working the way you want. So this is the geometry that you're going to be working off of to get it sort of in the position you want. You may move this back and then adjust the tang a bit, maybe make the spring a bit thicker. But that's something you want in place to kind of guide you along the way. Um, so in our case, if for instance I wanted to keep this, I will do another move. So this is a, something you can do, move, bodies, rotate and you'll select the axis as that. We can actually move it to the, it's not moving now, let's try that again. Oh, the body I didn't select it, sorry. Let's try that again. Right click, move, copy, change to bodies, select the body, we'll select the axis, and you can move that. So I'll make one for the half stop, and it's, I'm not going to create a copy, I'm just going to add it over there and then I'll just move back in the timeline to see oh it did create a copy there I didn't mean for it to do that but anyway um, we'll go back you can actually delete that feature and move copy bodies go back select this select the axis now it should seems to be making a copy. Anyway, so we can see there that relationship. If I go back in the timeline that, that piece is gone. So I can just go to here and right click on there, move copy, make sure we select the body, select the axis, and then move it to the closed position, which will be this make a 74. So ideally the kick's going to be touching there. So just fine tune that. So that's what it would look like in the closed position. And I can see that that's coming a bit far. So you can adjust either the pivot moving it forward, which would make your tang a bit longer and keep the blade more in, or what you can do is let me just go back in our timeline so we don't see that we could go into our original drawing and if I were to shorten the blade by say let's say I'm just gonna draw a line down here and across make that one millimeter 
This is just to sort of reference. So that would be one millimeter. I'm going to take my, um, actually we could probably offset it. Okay, that, no. So that won't, that won't work because then it's going to offset the whole thing. Um, what we can do is take our pattern tool, or not the pattern tool, sorry, our spline tool, and just follow that curve. You get something similar. T for trim. If I have to trim these parts off, I can get rid of these that I used to reference. Finish sketch. Now you can see that's the blade. It still looks the same. But if I go into there, I can see it has shortened and it is fitting in. Obviously this distance, we may have to change the spring shape a little bit to get some space over there. But that's something you can play around with. Obviously the spring won't be visible when you are, once a knife's all put together. So that would be your basic knife and or blade and spring relationship. Um, something we can go back into the drawing. We don't necessarily want this to be flat because you could get a bit of a, um, a bit of rocking if it's slightly proud there. So what I'll do, I will create a three point arc. Just go down there. You can kind of eyeball this or you could measure it out to a specific distance. Now if I go back into the extrude for the blade, I can simply select that part and I'll see there the blade is like that. So this is what we're sitting with at the moment. Um, we've got our blade and our spring, but I want to add in a liner as well as a, a handle. So to do that, I need different planes. I can either make a new construction plane, offset it from the top plane according to the height that I, so that would be 1.4 millimeters off because that's the thickness. Or well, I can just say create sketch on the spring because that's the surface I want it to be touching up against. Um, I'm going to turn these bodies off so I can see my drawing. I'm going to push P for project. I'm actually going to just project this line over here. Okay, finish sketch. So this is going to be the, our uh, liner. So I can go into sketches and I'll just label this one as liner. Now from that I'm going to go extrude. And you can see it's highlighting a bunch of different things. If I turn this off, all I'll be seeing is what we've just done. We, we want to make sure we keep these holes in. So I'm going to make this liner 0.9 millimeters. So 0.9 doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I'm just going to turn the sketch off, start again, extrude. And 0.9. Oh, I've turned off bodies, that's why. Okay. So there we've got that, 0.9. And important, you don't want to join, it's a new body. So now I've got this new body sitting on top there at 0.9 millimeters. I'm just going to go back into this top view. What we're going to do now is I neglected to label these, so we'll go make that blade. Let's turn off this one. This will be liner. And I'm not sure what this body is. Oh, this is the, the copy of the blade. I don't know why I ended up with two blades, but anyway, um, I must have made a mistake somewhere along the line. So I can just delete that. See, I've got my blade, my spring, and then my top liner. And we're going to repeat this step. Create sketch on the surface of the liner, because that's where we're going to put our handle. Um, 
I'm going to just turn off the bodies again and I want this liner sketch on because I'm going to project this P for project again we're wanting to project the holes as well as the outline okay and we can finish sketch so this sketch we can call handle and let's turn bodies back on so I don't make the same mistake and I can see there it is the correct place I'm starting from I'll take this out to three millimeters obviously you can determine your handle thickness I'm not quite sure what the handle thickness is on this one so if we look at that it might be a bit thick so we'll have three millimeters on either side plus 0.9 plus 2.8 my math isn't great so that's six nine ten point something so it's just over 10 millimeters total thickness I change it to a new body okay so now as you can see I've got a handle a spring a blade and the liner I'm not going to put the the curve and everything on here because this is purely for uh, machining so from this you can set up your CAD CAM processes your feeds and speeds and all of that and feed that into your CNC um, and then you can do the grind uh, manually and add in the, the nail neck and all of that um, so I'm not going to put that in here um, but what I will do now is show you how to mirror it so this is the reason I did it on the top plane and did, um, did it symmetric on both sides because I'm going to use the top plane as a mirror plane now so I'm going to go create let me just relabel this body handle top I'll change this liner one also liner top so bear in mind this is just a quick run through on how to do this in the actual process it'll take a lot longer a lot of playing around checking your dimensions um, I'll show you now as well looking at your spring height how that's going to be affected when it's in the quarter open position and quarter closed or three quarter closed um, just to so you can measure that height but let's go here create mirror the bodies I want to mirror I want to mirror this liner so let me turn off this so there we've selected the liner mirror plane I'm selecting a top plane now if I look I can see on the back side on the against the spring and the blade is another body so I'm going to change that it's labeled it liner top one so I'm just going to rename that liner bottom and I'll repeat that step for the handle so again create mirror selecting the handle let me just deselect there selecting the handle mirror plane okay this top plane and I can see it's over there so now let me rename this one handle bottom I like to label everything so you can see along the way where you're doing what and um, what will affect what um, so I'm just going to inspect here this point to this point so 10.6 that's your total handle blade spring thickness altogether so you could shave off a bit on the handle if that knife is a bit too chunky for you let me just close there so that's roughly what you got um, I'm not sure if you're going to be doing your handle contours on the CNC or if that will be done by hand if it will be done by hand you can just leave it like this otherwise you could add things like um, fillets along the edges now I'm going to teach you a trick so we've just mirrored this handle component if I make say I go here I make a fillet select this face let's do a two millimeter fillet okay it's not letting me do that sometimes it's you've got to select little parts of it manually it can be a bit cumbersome but let's let's try this on a line that is going to work okay so we can see there we've got a fillet along the top 
Now that's on the top one and if I go over there's nothing on the back side. So if I delete this from my history maker or history bar, go back there, I've dragged this to behind the mirror we made so we can see there's no line there and I put in my fillet and I go again one millimeter fillet. There it's on this top one. I've got my mirror now, I can see that that is being reflected on the back side as well. So this is something just to keep in mind if you're creating um, your contours on the CNC, uh, just so that both handles are mirror images of one another. Um, I'm going to leave it at that for the handle, I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can see it's got different sections, let's just give this a go here. Sometimes it breaks it up and it, or it puts it in uh, sort of sections that are, it doesn't allow you to edit. Okay, now it does allow me. So Fusion does some strange things sometimes, but now I want to actually just go again before here, add that fillet in. Okay, so now I've got that one millimeter fillet right around and it's on both sides. And if, for instance, you wanted to engrave something, you could add a text and emboss it. Um, but yeah, that's our knife in a nutshell. Um, I'm just going to turn off these handle and liner top so we can have a look at the spring again. Let me turn off the sketches as well. So there's our knife. I did notice it does kind of bend down there. So if we're looking at this sketch and I want to now adjust it so that's touching, you can just drag this up. So that, that would make it look like the geometry is fitting nicely because we could see with the kick in its current position it does work. So I close that. That adjustment's now been made to the body. And if I go here, move copy, select a body, and it's on rotate, select the axis and I'll move this into the closed position. Let's make that 164. I can see that actually works nicely. Um, you might want to do some adjustment on your spring there. I can see it's almost touching. With the spring tension it would pull it down. Um, but there we can see it's, it's looking good and if you're wanting to check your height so if I do this same step move copy select the body rotate select the axis and I move it into a position where I think this point is at its highest so it'll probably be somewhere around there press OK I go to inspect, select this top point and this line, I can see that's 1.75. So if you're looking at that, that is the height your spring is going to deform by. So your spring will sit up there in that uh, quarter closed position. So just bear this in mind. If you're wanting to adjust these, um, I played around with it for a while and uh, ended up going in circles, changing the pivots, changing a bunch of things. Put a slight angle on this, so if we look over here, it's more or less in line there. So if I move this point in a little bit and had the angle like that, it will adjust it and allow you to play with it a bit more easily. Um, it's just how the geometry works out. So that would be basically our knife. What I'm going to do now is show you how to tension the spring so that once it's manufactured this top part is actually lowered down slightly so when it's assembled it is tensioned so I'm going to take this piece move copy go to bodies select the body and this time create copy and it's free move I'm just going to drag it down here so you can see I've got a copy of that okay now what I'm going to do is, oh, it didn't make a copy. Let me just undo that and redo this. 
move copy. I must have neglected to select it after I changed the operation from rotate to free move. There we are. I can see it's still sitting at the top. So now I've got this spring one. So we're going to have another spring now. I'm going to first draw a, a line over here, a reference line. So I'm going to create a sketch on the surface of the spring here. And I'm going to push P just to project this corner. Now I'll create a line. You're not going to be able to really do much with this line. Um, this is just sort of referencing where you want to be. So I'm going down 0.9 millimeters because I'm going to drop this whole thing down by 0.9 and have it pivoted. Obviously with a, with a big enough um, that may not be enough but again this is something that you can play around with and to get, get your optimal tension. So I'm just doing it like that just to show you how it works. We'll turn sketches back on. I want to see that sketch. Now I'm going to create a copy of this. Right click on it. Create copy. Bodies. Select this body. Now I want to create a copy of this and it's going to be rotate. My axis will be this point over there to pivot it and I'm going to pivot it. That's well, almost exactly. So let's see what a uh, 5.2 degrees so you can just manually type in these numbers to get it to that point okay now oh man I didn't do the copy so important is make sure you select copy I'm just gonna redo that operation I'll delete it there and then right click, move copy, body, I'll select the body, create copy, and I remember that angle was 5.0 sure something to. So again, this isn't an exact science. This is something that will affect the walk and talk. So you're wanting to you're wanting to adjust this according to the feel. So everyone will maybe have a different idea of the optimal walk and talk. Um, you don't want something that's going to break your nail when you open it. You also don't want something that's a bit too loose and doesn't really work so well. Okay. So now what we've got is these two overlaid. But I want this bottom half over here. And it must flow into this section of the original one. So now that we've got this, we're going to create a sketch on this top plane. Doesn't matter which one you select. Um, I'm just going to turn this back sketch off so it doesn't pick up those lines. P for project. We're going to be projecting these lines from the body. Don't forget about your holes. That's not quite getting it. Every time I move it, there we go. Looks like we got it. Okay. Now we've got these projected lines here. I'm going to finish sketch. And we're going to extrude. I need to select these components. I do not want that hole. So as you can see now, we've got the front half of the new spring and the back half of the original spring. Uh, it's got this little curve on top, so when the spring is loaded, it should theoretically go up into that position. I want this to be negative 2.8. I can see that's going in that direction there. Negative 2.8. Okay, and it's not a cut operation, it's a new body. Okay. Now you can see we've got various springs here. Turn off those springs we don't want. This is our tension spring. 
So I'll go spring tensioned. So now when you're putting these onto your fixture plate, you can move and copy these like this. So you could move your knife, your, your blade, and use this spring and your handle and liner from the original over there. You can just say, let's have a look here. It's, if we're moving the spring, right click, move copy, body selected, I want free move. Make sure you click create copy like I often forget. Say we've got our blank over there somewhere and we're putting it in the blank, getting our machine uh, path right. There we would have that in the blank. Same thing with the blade, create copy, go to bodies and create copy. It's on free move, put that in there. This preserves our original drawing as well as giving us um, the parts that we want to, we obviously want to manufacture. So same with the handle. Just remember if you're doing a handle, um, it's not all that important to have um, the top and bottom handle specifically if you're going to be manually machining your curves. But if you're not, you're going to want to select each side individually so that you can have the correct machining done. So I'll bring that one there. Obviously it's not on the same plane now, we can adjust that later. I would want to um, translate that or rotate that, sorry. And Let me just cancel this. My computer is busy giving me a hard time. Right click on it, move, copy. This time we're not going to copy. Select the body and we're going to rotate it 180 that way. And then we would have a fixture plate that we could um, bring it in line with. But basically, those are the components obviously your liners as well that you'd be putting onto your fixture plate. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Um, I do a lot of other content. Um, this one is specifically for obviously a slip joint knife. I've been working on one with a friend of mine who's a custom knife maker. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, bye.